So, hello! It is now Suikoden 2 o'clock. It's the official time measurement for this new era. <laughs> so, let us get this game. Should be working. <laughs> I think I put everything where it should go. Did I test it? No. Why would you think I would test a game in advance to make sure that it works? <sighs> Although I need to um, import my save, which I should be able to do. Let's try this properly, shall we? Cross your fingers that everything works right. I will give you the context that I can, the best context that I can, so that you know everything you need to know. Um, see how this goes. Games? No. Games. Sweep it into. Sweep it into. Ah? Ah? Well, we're going to have to load our last save. So we'll give Chrono a minute to get here. Otherwise, we are going to have to fill him in. Oh my god. Okay, I really want to watch. Can I make you guys watch the intro? Um, I just want to load the save. All right, Chrono is here. <clears throat> Does it play the intro when I start the game with a, with a fresh save? I don't remember. It's, just, it's amazing. Okay, well. You are incorrect. It's actually traditional Japanese singing. Source, I know the woman who sings it. <laughs> This part of the song after my wedding we went back down the aisle to this <laughs> secret is deeply personally important to me <laughs> I may have gotten divorced but sweet and remains deeply important to me So that, my friends, is remains one of my favorite video game intros of all time. Okay, so how do I how do I import my save from the last game? Uh, can, do I new game? Does it does it offer me that? I assume. I'm trying to remember. Is there a way of doing that? Oh man, this is the version of this that I know. So. <laughs> We're gonna talk. Oh, well, let me turn the volume down a little bit. 
But you had to hear that music. It's not optional. You had to hear. Yes, he fights at Sanfas. Um. Sorry, you hear me like fidgeting with my microphone <laughs> over here. My apologies, folks. <clears throat> okay, thanks, Dover. Um, I just don't want to mess it up. Um. Thank you. Okay, so and yes, we're gonna we're gonna name him Rio because. I literally don't remember what my sister and I named him. There's no hilarious equivalent to McNugget. The only name that I've ever had in a game that I feel like touched the brilliance of McNugget is the sprite in Secret of Mana that I named Uncola, which probably only means anything to 90s kids, but it was very funny. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so... Riolu? Why is that? Is that a reference? Is that a reference that I'm not cool enough to get? I'm sorry. I don't understand it. Oh, it's a Pokemon thing. I'm sorry. Oh, Chrono. It's close enough, right? <laughs> Oh man. Okay, so my lack of Pokemon knowledge is is revealed to all. I'm sorry, the last Pokemon I played was blue when it was contemporary. <laughs> so maybe we'll remedy that at some point, but I was trying to play Pokemon Go and I kept having to ask my friends. I was like, I'm fighting at this and I don't know what to do. And they're like, oh, well, you want this type. I'm like, what Pokemon is that type? And so they're just like, just just show me what you've got. Just show me your Pokemon, that one. <laughs> Use that one against that thing. I feel like I would recognize Lucario if I saw it. Was it on one of the covers? Is it one of the like, legendary? <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, we're here to talk about Suicoden um, rather than Pokemon, although Pokemon may come up. Um, <laughs> Um, so the intro is absolutely amazing, mind blowing. So for the person who was asking about the generation, this is, I would say like mid generation PlayStation one. Um, so it's significantly, significantly, um, more established. Like, so the thing with Suikoden, Suikoden two was Mariyama's like, idea and he wanted to make this game with this story and this setting and then he was like you know i've never led a game before and my team hasn't made a game like this let's make a prequel to it so we can practice making a game so that when we sit down to make the game that i care the most about we've already learned what we're doing which there is a lesson there for those of us who are creative people um that uh there is value to waiting a little bit like you don't have to like wait until everything is perfect but like if you're like this is my first time doing a thing maybe having something that you're somewhat less attached to kind of as like a trial run it's a, it can be a good idea it's kind of like making um a mock-up when you're sewing something you make a mock-up with cheaper fabric to see if it works and then you use your fancy expensive fabric <coughs> i don't know Oh man, Forest of Seasons. Well, good night, and we'll see you later. Um, get some good sleep. It was good to see you. Um, but yeah, n so... So... Suikoden 1 has a lot of depth to the storytelling, the characterization, the world building. It establishes that it does not pull its punches, but in a way that feels more real and on, like, a scope that we can relate to and understand um as opposed to um like the final fantasy games like terrible things happen and people die but it kind of feels like a fairy tale in some some way or or like you're watching a play or something like that um or, or an opera um but here um the, the sweet Odin games when terrible things happen there's there's a there's a sense of reality to it that is really really powerful um and so even with their, like, basic, like, their first game, like, Baby's first game with Suikoden 1, 
I mean, as far as like the writing goes, the maturity of it, the, the way that they managed to make the world feel like a world, amazing. Um, on the technical side of things, um, little things like the music randomly stopping, <coughs> like abruptly stopping and then abruptly starting, um, some of like the menu things. Um, I'm not going to claim that Suikoden 2 is like the epitome of, of smooth game design because it's not, but I will say that it feels like a much more comfortable and mature game studio worked on it because they are they learn what to do and what not to do and then the understanding of the console generation increased as well um there were a lot of really brilliant things coming out of konami at this era because this is the playstation era konami so we're talking about like metal gear solid came out in the same era also konami castlevania symphony of the night also playstation era also konami and then suikoden and maybe there are other things that konami did i don't know i think they did a sports do I look like I know sports? And although I have been watching a volleyball sports anime <laughs> that I was just watching, that might be a little bit while I was late as I was eating dinner and watching an episode of that with my roommate. Um, but no, I don't really know sports. I think Konami did a sports. But yeah, so this is, oh, is it, is it late PlayStation 1? Okay, either way, there's there's a lot of technical understanding that goes into this game that um, wasn't there in the, in the first game. And so for those of you who have never seen this game before, but watched us play the first one, you'll notice like immediately, like even here, the animation is smoother. The, the way that the pieces, like the components of what's on the screen fit together, it's much smoother. The music, like the balance, everything is, everything is just a little bit more like it's supposed to be supposed to be <clears throat> so I will say that as far as the the characterization and the depth of the storytelling in my opinion this game is also um, far above the first game in that regard now I know people who are fans of the series who actually would disagree with me on that and think that we in one has a better story than we go into I don't think that you're welcome to think that it's a fantastic story I won't um, I won't complain unless you start telling me that the story of this game is bad and then we will have issues. Um, yeah, see like you see like how much more detailed the sprites are. It's just gorgeous. Willy Wonka castles? What do you mean by that, Squizgar? And yeah, no, the game does still have some glitches and there's some balance issues and things like it's not a perfect game, but it's a good game. Um, it's one of the greatest game stories. Yes, are you ready to experience what I, the person who cannot shut up about video game stories, consider perhaps, certainly of, like, older console generations, the greatest video game story that was ever made? In my opinion, other people can disagree, um, and I... I used to say, it's just without hesitation, it's the greatest video game story of all time. Um, frankly, in the past few years, games, especially indie games, have really introduced some contenders for that, and also made me rethink what I think of as a great story. Um, so, I don't know. But as far as, like, linear RPG stories, this game, in my opinion, is unparalleled like like nothing nothing ever there's just, it, it, it's good folks yes there we go it's so good but it is good in the way that a good book is good which some people might argue is not here we go this is, by the way, for anyone who missed the previous playthrough of the first game, I messed up my save in stupid ways, so we had to get one off the internet. So here is the one off the internet that we got. <clears throat> but the good news is that it has everything that we could need. Not enough data? Not try what? What is what do they mean by that? A better saved game, excuse me? Excuse mean what does that mean <laughs> is the memory card full I don't think so 
I think that's the only thing on it. Oh, but I really want to be able to show... Okay, there are a few scenes that I'm very attached to in this game that you can only get if you import the save. <clears throat> okay, um, well, this is pretty true to the Lauren the Flute streaming experience, and I thought we might actually have been okay. I probably should have tested this before the stream, but at least I downloaded the game before the stream. <laughs> I've, I've made that mistake. If you haven't played Suicoden 1 and you don't want Suicoden 1 spoilers, this is your official signal to please leave the room and come back after you have beaten the game. Um, for everyone else, um, uh, when you get all 108 stars and, and do things right, um, Gremio returns from the dead and then you have Gremio. And so having had all 108 stars and having the name of your main character and having Gremio be alive are all things that have some bearing in this game. Yes. And it takes the first, it's not just the first letter, Parking Lot Possum. It is every capital letter, if I remember correctly. So if you have McNugget, then it becomes Mnendol. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay so i'll just go ahead and say for the youtube folks i will go ahead and cut unless i say something interesting i will go ahead and cut the lauren fumbling around thing but i will not cut this stream so the rest of you will have to sit in place and and hang tight while we try to resolve our technical difficulties all right it would be really cool if the new file is named mcnugget Alas, that is highly unlikely to be the case. Okay. New game. Let's try this again. Okay. Lufia has really great mu music. Music. Words. Yes, I do. Hi, Brenneman. We've only had one technical difficulty. Thank you, Internet. Thank you, Internet. Amazing. Oh. Okay. Like, look at the custom work on the sprites. These are these are scenes you might never see again, but they bothered to animate the character pulling on. He's he's putting his clothes on, so he's like like straightening out his his top. Like, it's so immersive because they do that. This has some of I think my favorite sprite work that I've ever seen in a game, certainly of this era. Um, so. I had said earlier, like, if you don't want spoilers for Suicoden 1, this is, this is your, your warning. Um, I'm going to, oh, so his, his, it's like the, the traditional, um, the Monkey King from the Journey to, Journey, Journey to the West, is that what it's called? Um, but it's a, it's a design, like, an, a little, like, circlet crowny thing. Um, I don't remember what it's called. Um, but uh, that's that's the, his design is based on a like historical character, um, which is funny actually. A number of characters in this game are based on historical figures that I know because I have played Dynasty Warriors, <laughs> and also had a friend who was a Chinese history scholar. So that sounds better than because I played Dynasty Warriors. Um, but. Um, what I was going with this is I'm going to give you guys a general content warning for this game and for the beginning of this game, because when I first sat down to play this game back in high school, um, I played through this first section and I stopped because 
I did not know if I wanted to continue the game. Um, my sister talked me into it. She said, you know, it's an intense game. Um, it is upsetting in places, but you can handle it and it is absolutely worth it. And I am absolutely in agreement with her. Like it, it's, 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 it's very worth it. It's never meant to be, um, like it's never gratuitous, but it can be intense. Um, in this game, <laughs> thanks pal. I like my lipstick too. It's like my new favorite lipstick color. Um, just to give you, let's see, I'm going to try to do this, uh, carefully, um, because I do want people to steal themselves for it. I don't think that this game, unless you are more sensitive than I was as a teenager, and I'm a very sensitive person, and I was a very sensitive person as a teenager, um, you'll probably be able to handle it, but steal yourself up. Know that there is violence against um, people under the age of 18 in this. Um, there, um, there is violence and heartbreak. Um, there is um, excessive and somewhat Somewhatly, somewhat excessively violent cruelty. Um, there are no torture scenes, but there are really uncomfortable scenes of, of like, just cruelty is the best word I can think of. Um, and bad things happen to people. Um, there is no sexual violence in this game. There is no torture. I don't, I don't think there's any torture in this game. Um, so if those are deal breakers for you, I think you'll be all right. Um, but just, just do be aware, like it's sprite based, which makes it a little bit, um, a little bit farther removed. So it's, I think perhaps a little bit ups less upsetting than if something happened in a more like immersive 3d game. Um, but it was enough to give me pause at the time that I first played this game. So consider this your warning. I think you'll be all right. Just be prepared. Um, also yes, content warning, Luca Blight. Which, by the way, Luca Bright, Lubu, ah, um, Shu is Shige Leong, the uh, the strategist from <laughs> Dynasty Warriors, <laughs> and an actual history historical figure. Um, yeah, so, yeah, do not fight Lubu. <laughs> Anyone who's played Dynasty Warriors but hasn't played this game, that should give you a little bit of a hint. <laughs> you don't want to pursue Luca Blight, no. Um, okay, so here we're being thrown into the middle of the action. We have no context. We don't know what's going on. We know that we are in some sort of a camp. And that's literally all we've got. We don't know where we are. We don't know who these people are. We don't know how this relates to the original Suikoden. It's just like no context. It's great. I don't know how to pronounce it very well because it's Latin, but it's in media res, which is basically in the middle of the action. It's so it's a... It's a, it's a choice that a writer can make where you can either like start at the beginning, a very good place to start, or you can drop your audience into the middle of the action so they have to kind of figure out what's going on around them while it's going on around them. And they're both completely valid storytelling techniques. Um, this fits this very well. Whereas if you compare this to the first Suikoden, um, at the very, very beginning, um, you know, we, we're not like, it's not like once upon a time there was a thing, but it feels like it starts at a starting place. You like, you show up with your dad and your dad is like exposition and the people around you are like exposition. And it's like, now this is the beginning of your story, the beginning of your journey, all of these pieces that you can grab hold of and understand really easily. This game does not take the same, uh, does not take, take the same approach. So here we go. We're going to go through, um, and continue with this game. Hello, humming Hirano. Hold on. We gotta not have, gotta not have that. Oh, okay, good. Thank you. I was gonna do it, but Chrono was on it. Thank you, Chrono. So at this point, you know, here is a, I think Joey's name is spelled three or four different ways over the course of the game. <laughs> um, so here, you know, we've got the name Nami dropped on us as though we know who this is. There's not immediately the context. And then we get this. Oh my gosh. 
So we now we have a little bit more information. Family member. Master Genkaku's family, he's dead. There's a war going on. Again, the Suikoden games are about the human cost of war. So if there is a Suikoden, there is going to be a war. You can count on that. So I'm letting the text scroll on the screen slowly, even though I read fast, because I know that I read faster than most people. Does that work for you folks? Let's go outside. We should definitely go outside. So here's Joey. If you'll notice, um, most of this screen looks the same. Um, but you'll see there's there's H, R, H, and L, H there in the center. You can now have, depending on the character, three runes. Amazing. It's such an improvement. It's just fantastic. The, um, the Suikoden 1 uh, play-by-chapter RPG that my sister and I ran um, was based on there being only one rune. And so, in fact, like we had like big story dramatic things if someone accidentally had two runes or something. So then this game came along and just like messed with our canon. We were like, no, but it was great actually. <clears throat> oh yeah. Yeah. I guess the rest of the stats, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't stats, but I'm like, Oh, interesting. They've changed this. I wonder what this means about the story. Um, So here we have some people snoozing. Man, I walk really slowly. There we go. Okay, so here's a little bit of context. The Youth Brigade soldier. The peace agreement with the city-state. Defending a kingdom. Yeah, by the way. <laughs> Can you hear the audio? Like, how clear is the audio? Is it too low? Okay. So we're supposed to be wearing our armor there. Yeah, no, we don't run. This is going to be slow, sorry. Yeah, like the background really helps. Never went to the front line and I'm glad. Highland soldier from the Unicorn Brigade. Hold circle. Oh, I can run, okay. <laughs> I don't know that gushy is quite the right word for this. These boys are having a fight. <laughs> like he gets out of bed, breaks them up, and then goes back to sleep. When you see the amount of detail and the, uh, the, like the, the level of animation, we get little sweat drops and emotions and things like that. Like they've really like, it's, it's a much, I can't, oh, I, I can run. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So it's a peace agreement. So we don't have to stand watch tonight. So instead, he's sharpening his sword like a child, like a good child. So here we're using colloquial expressions. By the way, since this has been localized, and I believe it's a fairly American localization, if anyone is like, what do these words mean? Please speak up. Basically, I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. But like, very colloquial. It's a great word. You say colloquial, you feel very smart. 
very excited about tomorrow. We get to go home. We're already putting on our not soldier clothes. The captain will get mad. I notice that they talk about it like they're like they're their children who are gonna get in trouble with like a camp counselor instead of like soldiers. But they haven't been to the front line. Like, they've only been out and about for, like, you know, they, they go back home and things, so. Let's see. Before we head outside of camp, have I been everywhere inside of camp? Oh, yeah, like the shadows and everything, just, like, the level of detail work, the artistry in this game, just... It's, it's just incredible by comparison. See, like, look at that. Isn't that, isn't that gorgeous? Like, yeah. And, like, you hear the sound. It's very immersive. The animation is fantastic. Ha, <laughs> All right, here's another kid. We're safe and secluded, but we have a sentry anyway. Actually, I don't remember. Do they have multiple things to say in this game? No, they don't. Okay, that's probably good for me. <laughs> it's always dangerous for me, because I will talk to everyone a bazillion times. So here's a kid from our hometown, Kiaro. This like is a nice little way of letting you know, hmm, I wonder if the character who's got a female name, who is the only member of my family, that must be my sister, Nanami. Again, they're, they're, they don't believe in giving you info dumps. They're very skillful. Um, Perhaps there are cryptids in these woods. That didn't look like a cryptid, though, did it? Just wandering around, looking at things. It could be. It could be Mothman. Oh. Hmm. Ah, here we go. No? Okay. I thought I could go. I guess I have to go back. If I remember correctly. Then. Wandered around. I'm trying to remember when the last time someone thought something off was off. Was that Victor? Saying that something was off? Which again, if you'll remember correctly, or if you'll remember, Flick and Victor are both missing as of the fall of Gregminster. Okay. Is there anything else I'm supposed to do here? I feel like I'm missing something. I don't remember the details of it before I go back to my tent. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's the captain. He's a real charmer. All right. I want to say, yes, this is most certainly not the most glamorous job. Okay. So I have to go back to bed now. Yes. He does care about my sleep hygiene. It's just like the way that he phrases it. You're just like, oh, this guy is not very nice with these kids, is he? And, and everyone's, everyone's afraid of getting yelled at by him.
Have I done everything? I feel like I did. I thought there was something else. It's been a little while since I played this game last. Okay. All right. I think that's everything. Okay. How many people in attendance who feel like raising their hand have not ever seen Suicoden 2 before? Is Chrono our... Chrono is not our only one because Blade Tiger, I think, had said... Okay, so we've got a few of you. Right now, you don't need to know anything from the first game. You can play this without any knowledge of the first game. We will tell you the context as it comes up. Okay, perfect. Well, there's a surprise attack on the Youth Brigade. Who would have seen that coming? God, I love the music in this game so much. Chrono, you've probably heard me play the Suicode into soundtrack during creative sprints. Oh yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of punctuation. There this the translation is in some ways brilliant and in other ways a hot mess. And the punctuation is one of the hot mess ways. Thank you for raiding. <laughs> it is, it is one of the best games ever. We are starting it off. I, I just, just to let everyone know, this is not a first playthrough for me. This is a game that has been near and dear to my heart for since it first came out. But I'm introducing folks on stream to it. Um, so as you can tell, we just started. So Raud is telling us to go save ourselves. Thanks, Kath. As I cautioned you, the child soldiers are dying in the opening section of the game. It is like the game is telling you, you have to be prepared for things to be hard and wrong. And if you are uncomfortable with this and can't continue, now you know. Um, I remember playing this as a teenager myself and I was absolutely shocked and horrified. Like if you look at the, the sprite twitching, like you can tell. Like, the kids trying to help each other. Yeah, oh yeah, no, like, these kids are, it's like, fatally wounded. I hear Joey is out thinking what's going on and he knows something's not right. This game is amazing. It's... <sighs> yeah, well, Squizgar, in other... Well, in uh, other JRPGs that I can think of, at least, like, children don't usually get killed. Uh, as as much like this, but also part of what makes it so effective in Suicoden is that it's it's a much more grounded and real story and it shows you these children and they are acting like children who are 
who are hurting and scared um, rather than acting like characters in a story and that makes it so much more effective in my opinion um, but yeah Joey is a clever person let's go tell the captain that we might be ambushed because he might not understand that we might be ambushed <laughs> again these are children they are dead. One of them has an arrow sticking through his back. Like. So, yeah. So those kids weren't dead when we passed through here. We, they thought maybe they would get away. You know, this is, this is a massacre of children. Let's so the characters are moving on their own here. In case anyone doesn't recall, Raud is our commanding officer. Welcome to Luca Blight. Yes, he is literally saying he wished he could be in there killing children himself. Welcome to Luca Blight, folks. served their country well enough by being killed. Young men, their children. This is the youth brigade. I think Rio is what, 15? Politics. So in a lot of JRPGs, um, you have a scary person who's like, I like to kill people and laugh about it. Ah oh, ha 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 ha. Um, and it's kind of cartoonish or big and larger than life, like Kafka. Um, imagine a character like that in the real world. And that's why Luca is so scary, <laughs> because he's not just a like a person who's violent in a world that is filled with these horrible, evil, violent people being horribly evil and violent. No, he's just a dude. He's just some guy. Um, and that's scarier, in my opinion. Hello, Audio Mio. And thank you, Suzanne, both for the raid and for the gift sub. <coughs> yeah, Luca is, <sighs> yeah. And he is, by the way, our prince, if you didn't gather that. The prince of our country is here overseeing the slaughter of our child soldiers. Yes, they did just collect the youth brigade in a way. Which again, so... For those of you who haven't played, and I hope I'm not completely ruining the pacing by talking so much through this, because this is a very effective scene, but also I find, in case it is intense, sometimes talking through things can make it a little bit more palatable. Um, in Suikoden 1, we find out that one of the strategists for our country um, had our army burn a city to the ground, um, or, or destroy a town in our country and blame it on the enemy country to make our army fired up. Um, 
So this is similar, and I kind of wonder whether this idea maybe partially came from Kaleka. Um, yes, we'll get to that Argathon, though. <laughs> um. But the, the Kaleka incident, as it's referred to in the first game, is a, it's, a, it's a pivotal moment in history that had... Uh, it, it shaped the people who were involved. <coughs> oh, I guess they did. Did they call Joust in the city-state in the first game? Did they make that clear? Because I wasn't sure if that was something that folks here would know. They did call it the city-state in the first game. Okay, yes, so the city-state of Joustin, who is who we have the peace treaty with here, is the same city-state of Joustin that was invading uh, the Scarlet Moon Empire, if you'll remember that, which actually was related to the Kaleka incident. <laughs> so... Shall we talk to the captain? Does that sound like a good idea? Also, um... Because I don't remember absolutely every single thing that you're supposed to do to prepare for later events. Those of you who remember this game better than I do, please signal to me in advance if there's a thing. I know there is something coming up that I have to make sure I do. I know that's coming. Um, I don't remember... Well, we'll get there. Okay. Krona does not want to talk to the captain. Yeah, do we want to do we want to go down there and talk to the captain? <laughs> does that sound like a good time? I don't remember if that affects things. I don't think it does. Yeah, no, Ali, that's what makes this so effective. Okay, Chrono would rather not go down and talk to the captain. And I don't know that we miss... I don't think that that affects anything. Yeah, so it's, it's, so it's just, it's just dialogue. Um... Actually, no, we're gonna, we're gonna have the dialogue because I, I think that, I think that it is a, I think it is a good moment that really drives home this, this scene and this section. Punk, the ultimate insult in this Weekend in series. Alright, so now we have to have combat. Fight. <laughs> Let's use the buddy attack, shall we? So, in some ways, Suicoden 2 is better balanced than Suicoden 1. Like, there's fewer absolutely horribly broken unite attacks and things but oh yes it, it tells you things a lot that it didn't tell you before do you feel how much smoother it is as we go through this it tells us our money like the transition back to screens is fine so there we go I think that that's worth that I think that scene is worth seeing. <coughs> so we're gonna get away from Luca because that is the best choice for continued existence. Okay. So I guess it is definitely a Kaleka style incident. Alright. We're going to unite attack so much. 
It's a very useful Unite. I have absolutely drawn an illustration of the buddy attack. Oh, I found, by the way, some art that I forgot that I'd drawn. I have a picture of Matthew and Odessa sitting on a couch being brooding. Oh, you repeat 108 times for a slightly different cutscene? I did not know about that. Just got a level, very nice. Punks again. The other is he doesn't want to fight us. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about then. Okay. I think that actions here are... I think that what we say and do here matters. So please tell me... Like, I'm pretty sure that this is... Oh, man. Is this the one? Because I know that some of this, some of this scene matters. So, I don't remember exactly which part. Okay. 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 I thought that there was something. Does it matter which one of these I give? I feel like I should say I promise here. Because with an intent to avoid spoilers for those of you who haven't seen the game, in this game, um, things that happen later on can be affected by things, decisions that you make, things that you say, and actions that you take. Not constantly, um, but, um, but there are some, and so if folks can just make sure, I thought this was one of them. Um, it does kind of look like enormous eyebrows. Okay, well, we're, we're doing this because it's the right thing to do. Sorry, you don't gotta stay in the matter, Chrono. That's what we're doing. <laughs> so we're plunging off to that waterfall. Who knows if we'll make it? I'm gonna be absolutely insufferable about my trip to Tokyo. I warned you. I met the woman who sings this song because I was performing with her and her composer friend at MAGFest and I told her I was obsessed with Suikoden and I found out she was the singer of this. It turns out she works on the series. So we talked about Suikoden for like three hours through a translator. We kept in touch online and so in 2018 she invited me to come to Tokyo because there was going to be a Suikoden 2 concert um, and it was... The animations are gorgeous, but you see these these story moments. Like you saw the children together, you saw your character and the girl kneeling in front of a grave. Um, now you're seeing Joey and Ryu joining the army. And you, here you see Nanami waving you off. I love this song. There's Murayama. I got to shake his hand and thank him on behalf of the American Speaker and fandom for everything he had given us, which was pretty cool. By the way, so for those of you who have not seen the first game, um, 
There are two characters that we love very much that were very significant characters over the course of the first game. Um, and then as you're fleeing the castle at the very end, having fought the final boss and everything, um, there's soldiers rushing at you. And these guys are like, run on ahead. We've got this. And then when you beat the game and it kind of goes through like what happened to people, it's like they disappeared and like the battle at Gregminster and I thought they died. I was so upset because I love Flick and Victor so much. Anyway, this is Victor. <laughs> so he's not dead, which at the time of like this game coming out, we're like, we had no idea. We didn't know if it was going to be connected. We didn't know anything about anything. We thought those two guys were dead. You, you, you go through this horrifying scene in which children are slaughtered and then and you have this like heartbreakingly beautiful song that plays with this like like you know tender character moment and then they give you an old friend because if you're anything like me you were absolutely shocked and horrified by that scene and i know i talked through it and i apologize if that kind of wrecked some of the pacing or the emotional feeling um but uh but this is again as i've said a lot like I don't know if they did all of this stuff consciously or if this is just kind of they followed their good storytelling instincts, but you need something comforting after that experience. And for those of us who had played the first game, seeing a familiar face, seeing that Victor was alive was fantastic. <laughs> also, <laughs> how much has he changed? Not a lot is the joke. So here we see we've survived. Look at all these beautifully animated sprites. And then our pal Victor's there, being Victor. Do we give him our name? We, as the player, know that he is a trustworthy and safe person. Unless he's changed, which he doesn't seem like he has. So it's, it's, this is a really nice moment of irony in which we, the player, know things that the characters don't know um, that adds a lot to this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself here. And Victor is graceful and, and gentle as ever. He's, he's not. <laughs> this is this is Victor. So even if you haven't seen him before, um, you still get a strong sense for his personality. And if you have seen him before, you get a strong sense of, oh, this is my friend. I know him again. It's tact and professionalism. That's Victor. Okay. Do we say that we were attacked or do we say that we were ambushed? It doesn't really matter. <coughs> we're going to go with ambushed. Well, no, we weren't attacked. Signed a peace agreement. Ah, are you a Highlander? Yes, we are a Highlander. There can be only one no. <laughs> yes. So clearly we have landed someplace that isn't Highland. Because Victor is very confused <laughs> about what we're doing here. Yeah, well, they're the Unicorn Brigade with all of the, all of the kids. Shall we, shall we lie to Victor? Let's, shall we do as Nick says and lie to Victor? Let's do it. <laughs> He's a gentleman. <laughs> Thanks, Victor. You're helping. <laughs> so what do we do here? Do we come clean or do we say nothing? That's true. He didn't cut off anyone's head or threaten to, which he did repeatedly in the first game. To be fair, most of the people whose heads he was talking about cutting off had just, like, killed people or led to people being dead. Um, but he did, did talk about cutting your dad's head off. And again, you just fought your dad's army with your army and then your dad challenged you to a one-on-one -on -one duel to the death. So there were, there was context. 
but still. I guess that's true. I guess that was Matthew. So Victor has acquired some mercenaries. <laughs> Sorry, I love, I love Victor. Um, and just in case you wondered. So compare, compare Flick's portrait here. I mean, I think the art in Suikoden 2 is like light years better than the art from Suikoden 1. Um, but also, Flick appears to have grown up a little bit. In the first game, for those of you who don't know the first game, Flick is this, like, hot-headed, rash young man um, who kind of, over the course of the game, learns to chill a little bit. But some time has passed, and he has become a proper adult. <laughs> hey, Baritone! Doing all right. Doing all right. So there's another one. What happened to the other one? Flick is the less immature one. <laughs> he is more mature in this game. Yeah, so they tried, they, they saw there were kids in the river and they decided they were gonna try to get you out. And presumably Joey too. <laughs> He's trying to be. <laughs> I can imagine being, cause Rio is not very big, and Victor is very big. I can imagine being a little afraid of him. We're gonna go to the fort. The mercenary fortress! Oh, I love this game. That's fair, Chrono. You're welcome to do that. I'm sorry. This is one of my favorite soundtracks for any game ever. Yes, yeah, so Victor was hot-headed, but he actually managed to uh, uh, keep uh, keep Flick relatively out of trouble <laughs> in the original. Yes. Okay. So remember what I said about the translation. I don't think they had time to proofread. We will find the cat that says honk at some point, but we're not there yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, like, I just... Hi, Paul. Do you notice, like, I'm not, like, a watch over you. I'm going to watch out for you. I'm going to take care of you. No work, no eat, which, by the way, um, the song that it plays here is called Those Who Work Must... Or Those Who, Those Who Eat Must Work, I think. Um, the The... So, whereas, like, Sakuraba compositions have completely absurd, like, nonsensical names for the songs, the names for the songs in this game are very good and poetic and descriptive. So, yeah, no, there's definitely not time for proofreading. <laughs> and I think they were, this is one of those ones where they were working from a giant spreadsheet, so... Victor? Lazy? Never. So we're going to do some box pushing. Do 
Not even tutorials. Oh man. I don't know that you can push things in this game. That's the thing is, I don't know that you push anything else. I don't remember. The only other thing that I can remember pushing is not... <sighs> the gate is the only thing I can remember pushing. There are a few things you can push besides the gate. The gate's literally the only thing I remember. Which we can do if we want to. <laughs> Thanks, Dover. Thanks. We really need to have a pun emote so that whenever somebody puns, we just spam the pun emote. I don't know what the illustration of a pun emote would be. Did I do it wrong? <sighs> I guess I didn't do it enough. I don't know. Good pun. Okay. Let's see if this is right. That's not where I pushed it. I don't think that's how I was supposed to push it. Are we helpful or are we complaining? <laughs> Either one would be justified. Okay. <laughs> and see, Paul is really nice, so we're in good hands. He's not scary the way Victor is scary, but like Victor and Flick are good people. Um, so it's like not surprising that they have good people. So rations have been tight, but like, see, we got food. He's hanging out with us while we eat. They're making sure they're taking care of me, even though I'm a prisoner. An errand. <laughs> I am their prisoner. And we're gonna just leave and get stuff and come back. <laughs> yes, again, for those of you who didn't see the first game, Victor set a house on fire so we could break into it. That is that is correct. Victor set two buildings on fire, I believe. <laughs> He's a good person, though, I swear. Um, so at this point, like, we're just telling you, like, little bits about things, but it's, at this point, it's kind of like Easter eggy type stuff where it's like, oh, I know those characters. Oh, what are they doing here? Um, yeah, I want to do, like, the pro pun and the anti pun. Um, that was, that was originally the plan. Um, because even in Discord, we have the pro pun brigade and the anti pun brigade. Um, so, oh my god, Victor and Seahawk would probably be friends. They do set things on fire. <laughs> Alright, so there's things we have to go do, and now we just wander around. No, he didn't sh set Jazarazadi on fire. That was uh, that was um that was spoiler. <laughs> that was Sanchez. <laughs> oh no, oh no, we're quoting the song. <sighs> so Victor is aware that there's a problem, but he's not letting. Like, we're just some kids, so he's not gonna make it our problem. Two flints? Three, three? Two boots, three flints, and something else. Flint stones. Haha. <laughs> Sorry, I, I had no choice. Ah, okay. 
All right. Oh man. Hi, Barbara. I love Barbara. <clears throat> oh, you're a prisoner just coming around. Yeah, we're gonna get three of everything. I'm just like wandering into people's spaces, just doing stuff, running around, you know, like a prisoner normally does. The mercenaries aren't very good at having prisoners who are kids. So the war is technically over and everyone's talking about what they're going to do. Or the, what they're gonna eat. Oh, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, Leona. You're helping. This is a bunch of stars of destiny around here. Oh, man, I'm gonna make chili this week, I think. So they're kind of filling in like, oh, you've been doing a lot of chores rather than just the couple of things that we see. You guys, just me. There's no other kids. Flower. We're gonna have to go, go to a village to get some flour. I'm sure we'll just go to a village. Oh man, hi Victor. Hi Victor. <laughs> I'm sorry, I jumped in your bed. See, like, he's like, oh, cool, you're helping. Thank you. Be good. <laughs> hey, recruit. I mean, not that you're a recruit or anything like that. Oh my god, Flick is looking dramatically out the window. Hi, Flick. Hold on, we gotta talk to this person first. We don't have any money. And even though they're mercenaries, they were glad for there not to be. Yeah. Like, I am a prisoner, soldier from the enemy army. <laughs> Obviously. So if you hear a weird sound, it's my, my uh, humidifier. Keeping it from being like uncomfortably dry in here. My sister made this because she's a cosplayer and it hangs on the wall in her house. It's amazing. It's a lion. Can't you tell? It's pretty great. It's pretty great. Let's see if I can get her to send a photo of it. See, when I say that Sweet Godin is like super important to me and my sister, it super is. All right, Paul, we got what we could get, but there wasn't any flower. See, we get an extra pair of boots. I'm your prisoner, Paul. What? All right, Leona. <laughs> There's kobolds in all of the games. Yeah, see, see, we're being babysat. Someone has to show us how to go to the place because we don't know what we're doing. It's not that they have to put a soldier to keep an eye on us and make sure we don't make a break for it and run back to Highland. 
No, there. I swear there's kobolds in five. There's the beavers, actually. Does that count? There's animal races in them all. Because there's the, there's the nay kobolds in four. Nako, kobold, they're the cats. It's a pun. <laughs> Thanks, Sweeker and team. I thought there was one. So, and I guess it's not like kobolds really, but in three we do have Sergeant Joe, the coolest, most serious character in the game, who's also a duck. All right. <laughs> Here is a small child who is going to come. No, Sergeant Joe is amazing. Shortly after he starts talking in the game, I forgot that he was a duck and absolutely love and adore him, but I wanted to refuse to play the game after I saw his character design. <laughs> But he's actually the most serious grown-up character in the game, except for maybe Ghetto, so... He's great. He's a duck. Sergeant Joe is a duck with a helmet that has a duck on it. <laughs> he's a duck. There's a duck village. There's a there's a duck tribe of duck people in the duck village in Sega the Three. He's the coolest, most serious character in the game, Kama, who is also a duck. It's amazing. Anyway, I'm sorry, like... Dr. Juan's chores. <laughs> That's right, Gengen. <laughs> Thanks, Leona. All right, so I have a kobold warrior and a child with a medicine rune. No, it's fair, Chrono. You see what I mean? He's a duck. He's literally a duck. Okay. Okay, so I don't get to change your clothes. Look at all that medicine this kid is carrying. So everything, like, the... Everything works much better here. So those are the runes. See, right now everyone can have a... <coughs> a right hand rune. Um, but no other runes. But there will be other runes. Slots. That sounds right. Hi, Paul. All right, so now we're outside the fortress, just hanging out. <laughs> Picked up this dog because he looked hungry and needed a place to go. <laughs> this is the kind of people who are in Victor and Flick's mercenary army. They're really adorable. Also, look at look at the translation. <laughs> look at this. I mean, it's perfect. Like that's what dogs say. But like the all lowercase, no spaces, punctuation is just it's amazing. Victor is an incredible seam sewer. <clears throat> That back guy slacking off. As they've said, everyone's lazy. The, I don't remember where the cat is. Things in boxes and barrels? Oh, really? Okay. Oh, shoot. I'm going to have to talk to every barrel, aren't I? I don't know why I'm going up here, but I am. Greg, I think you mean most people can't sew at all. Sewing isn't actually a gendered skill, and I haven't known many people of any gender who can sew. Alright, 
right, let's see if we can pick up this stuff. Empty barrel. I love in Fantasy Star 4 how Chaz, like, critiques the cleanliness of people's kitchens. And they're, like, the cabinets. <clears throat> Deep, dark well. All right, we're just going to wander off. All right, Captain Gengen. Yes, Captain Gengen. Chaz is, Chaz is a goof and I love him. Fantasy Star 4 is another game that's near and dear to my heart. So now we want to go northeast and I don't know with this party that I actually want to not go where I'm supposed to go. God, listen to the music. I'm sorry. There's a mist monster. <sighs> we, we take everything very seriously. See, so like, like little details of like the birds that run away when you approach them. Like, the world feels, at least in my opinion, the world feels very real and lived in. That name may sound familiar. Oh man, have you not played Suicoden 5, Brian? Oh my god, Greg. That is terrible. Very good. Okay. Man. I'm gonna have to figure out how to balance it's not spoiling with talking about stuff. With the series. Oh, it's so good. Sales have been bad. <clears throat> But this place doesn't look like it's being, like, abused, like, the corruption in the Scarlet Moon Empire. Looks like war again. <coughs> Should I buy this? Look at how much nicer this system is. It tells you how much it raises your stuff. <coughs> I guess this is all of my monies. Do I want it? Yeah. So you can get good things if you buy things that are rare finds. Like, that's why, like, I... Oh, hey, Millie! Oh, man. I want the friendship rune. The friendship rune is the rune that is better if you talk to more people. Unless I'm mistaken. Captain Kangan, you got promoted. I'm prisoner, yes. Put it on your bill. Sure, it's not like we're in a hurry or anything like that. Nobody is in a hurry in this entire mercenary army. <clears throat> There's a show. So are these little thing, little like chopsticks holders on the table, or what? Or are they plants? All right. So here we have sharpening. Howdy. Haven't sharpened for a very long time. Do I want to sharpen? I, I'll wait. I don't need to sharpen. But anyway, sharpening is still a thing. Running a blacksmith. 
Oh man, well we are close to the very beginning. <clears throat> Do I want to sharpen? I don't know. I guess I might as well. Let's sharpen. Sure. I don't have enough gold slash potch. <coughs> Unfortunately, gambling is less broken in this game than it is in the first game. Oh, hush, you. Huge pot. You still kind of run your army on gambling, but it's not quite the same. Where did you come from? <laughs> so he's a mercenary, one of our mercenaries, I guess, who's, who's from this town and has come to hang out with his family. So they mentioned a show. What's about to start? Whole bunch of people. Ah, New City. That place won't be significant. Certainly not. It's not like locations in Suica didn't ever actually matter. Save data. Good night, Brian. Sleep well. Alright, so now we can have like a bunch of saves. Ah, <coughs> <coughs> oh, state soldier. Okay, so those aren't mercenaries, those are just soldiers. Okay. All thanks to Annabelle. Chrono, you're going to like Annabelle. <laughs> Mist monster. All right. Yes, this game is absolutely incredible, and I will be crying a lot. I cried a lot during the first one replaying it. Hi, Bogan. Hi, Rena. Hi, Ellie. Hi, Lee. <laughs> That's funny, Chrono. All right, so we can't do anything with them yet, but they have names and faces. It's a cue. A hint that they might be important. <clears throat> What's down here? Holly boys! Yes! Why is Tuda in the front row? So there are certain enemies that recur in the whole series, and like the holly berries, the holly boys, the holly fairies, all of those things. Oh, Gen Gen is a whopping level six, man. Giant cowbell? Oh, what, Tuda's weapon? I don't, what is, what does Tuda fight with? <clears throat> Pebble? Oh, medicine bag. Yes, he is the doctor's apprentice. Hi. Done with your chores? I just, I love this dude who's like, this dog was hungry, so now it's my dog. <coughs> oh, I see. Okay. Doesn't it have something like that in Final Fantasy 7 Remake? Paul is wearing the same outfit as everyone else, but he's got brown hair instead of black hair, so you can tell he's different. <coughs> Gengen's tail wags as he walks off. We had fun. We went on a, we went on a, on a little, little trip together. Do 
Did they put me back in my cell? That's right, they put me back in my cell. <laughs> like, they're just... Paul is super adorable. The mercenaries are super adorable. It's just very cute and wholesome. <laughs> I don't think they ever tell you why there's oil all over the floor. I feel like we can blame Victor for this one. <coughs> Speak, speak, speak. <laughs> Dover, that's funny. So I just have to check all of the rooms. Make sure I don't remember if all of the oil spills are in the main area. <clears throat> yes, it is true. Victor has set things on fire before. So one thing that I think is funny and interesting and neat is... I have played all the Suikoden. Um... <clears throat> I have played well okay I've played I've played all five of them I haven't played tear crease but it sounds like it's very different so I don't know if we count it as having played as we could in <laughs> poor Victor this is slander no I haven't played tactics either Is that, is that all of them? I think that's all of them. Let's go see if Paul says yes or no. Which one are them? Because there were the um the side stories, Nash's side stories, <clears throat> Suiko Gaiden, one and two. <clears throat> oh, and those are actually relevant. So we get some interesting character story stuff that we don't get in the main games. <clears throat> so we get on four is bad and I will only play it if we need to do some sort of a like fundraiser stream thing or something like a friend over when people can be over again and just marathon through that terrible game we'll name the main character Bubbles <clears throat> I really don't like it. Huh, I got them. I've never even heard of that. The true rune is interesting, and Eleanor is interesting, and the king is interesting, so it's good that they basically remade him for five because they realized he was wasted. Eleanor was wasted on that game. Aha! Here's the one. I knew there's one I'd forgotten. <coughs> Anyway, sorry folks to just be like talking through like all this stuff while we do kind of menial stuff in the game. But it's it's charming, it kind of gets you you get to know some of the characters. My talent. My talent is cleaning the floors. I'm sorry, that was just like, it was a good answer. I had to give it. <clears throat> so I've like. Alright, so. Solider. A mercenary Solider. I'm sorry. As somebody who's spent a fair bit of my life proofreading. It makes me twitch a little bit, but it's also funny. Somebody snuck, snuck in here. Who could it be? It's it's Joey. That's who. And he sneaks in here and he's yelling, trying to find me. Yeah, so Joey survived, which is pretty great, actually. I'm going to yell back.
He literally breaks us out of jail. <clears throat> All right. So we gotta sneak out. This is not the right way. Look. I just see everybody's gone. Oh, oh, maybe that means that I can get items that I couldn't get to before. Probably not, though. It seems like it's dangerous to leave your blacksmithing fires going overnight without anybody watching them. <clears throat> maybe that's just because I'm really, really not a fire person. <coughs> Man, did I ever... Oh. Flick is disrespecting us, <clears throat> insinuating that we're not adults. Well, shall we try to fight or shall we be understanding? All right, Kroner thinks we should be reasonable. <clears throat> But I imagine you'd want to have somebody watching the fire in your forge. All right. Joey Atreides. Yes, you can make your Dune references if you want to. Okay. Good job, Chrono. <laughs> I've never smithed anything, Funkle Skin. That's super cool. So that means that if we ever need um, our weapons forged so we can take on the uh, the Imperial Army, we come to you. <laughs> You're the only blacksmith we have in our, our in our uh, our community that I know of. All right. Yeah, notice that they didn't. They never even asked for you. Like, so, you're Highland soldier. What are you doing here? How did you wind up in the river? You know, Fungal Stiltskin, that's more than I can do. So I'm impressed by your ability to make tent pegs. I love that, like, because we've been here for, like, three or four days, and it's just, they haven't... Meh. Let's see. Shall we go ahead and say? I don't remember what Duncan Idaho is. All right. Chrono wants to tell the truth. So we tell the truth. And Victor's like, um, that's bad. We're gonna go back home. So knowing Flick and Victor as we do, like, they're like, these children are going to go get themselves killed. Perhaps we will keep them in the basement until we figure out how to fix this. Not Kansas. So there's all these good people in the world. And one of the things that I like about Suikoden is that there are, for all that people like Luca exist, although really there aren't that many characters in the series like Luca, fortunately. But for all that you see, like the petty evil of the corrupt, um, the corrupt military people in the previous game, there's a lot of good people who just do the right thing out of the goodness of their hearts. Also, that's adorable. Did 
There are two and the second one is boring. I, I can only think of two. <laughs> Please don't try to escape again. I know, I know why you want to do it, but could you just please don't? Please don't. <clears throat> Uber's different though. Uber's not human. Luca is, that's what makes him effective. Hi, Alex the Observer. So Joey is trying to take care of you. He's offering you the extra carrots. Yes, Arlen, that's the one that I was saying I think is boring or not good. I was like, oh, you've already done Luca and Luca was good. Don't try to do Luca again and do it bad. It's like they completely missed what made Luca good. Anyway. <clears throat> yeah, well, so Luca does actually have a backstory that explains some of why he is the way he is. Um, but I think you have to have, I think it's something we know because of like a novelization. Um, anyway, we'll get into that a bit more when we get later in the game. I'm doing okay. Joey's like, show me your inventory. <laughs> so if you haven't gathered, Joey is the smart one. Maybe we're not thinking of the same character, Greg. I think we're not thinking of the same character. Yeah, Joey's planning to get out. Flint, oily rag, rope. Where could this be going? <laughs> <clears throat> Oh man, okay, well Alex, we're still fairly early on, so um, there aren't any major spoilers or anything at this point. This is very close to the beginning of the game. We've only been playing for like an hour, hour and a half. So yes, Joey got the spoon so that he could break us out. And see, they, it's just like, it'd be one thing if it was like glowing embers, but that's like a fire like bad bad idea I just I don't trust fire it's a tough life oh my god I'm gonna run out. we need to get we need to get this pun emotes okay I'll put that on my list of emotes that I need to I need to draw or design or commission I still haven't settled on that trying to go oh I have to go up these stairs okay forgot that there were stairs on both sides that's Flick's room yes Joey Joey is I, I, I feel like there's something very entertaining about the fact that Joey tries to set Victor's house on fire <laughs> to escape <laughs> because see Victor set houses on fire to escape in the first game. <clears throat> well, I'm glad you made it, Alex. We're going to be talking through this one. This is a game that I know and I love a lot. Um, so I'm just going to be talking about stuff with it and sharing it with folks. But yeah, I'm sure it's not accidental that they're like, it would be really funny if somebody tried to burn down Victor's house to escape. The breaking in and breaking out are just two sides of the same action. <laughs> I 
There you go. Billy Tiger has it. Yeah, so so our the prince of our of our kingdom had our army, our youth brigade in the army killed by our own troops to start a war back up. But I'm sure going back home would be great. That I'm sure that's a great idea. I'm sure that's safe. <clears throat> Well, Chrono, should we go back or should we say it's too dangerous to go back? Well, at least we won't be going alone because we've got a friend. Does anyone have any strong opinions? Too dangerous? All right. Blade Tiger has spoken. Okay. I think that that was Paul on the right. I've totally drawn the buddy attack, but it was bad. It was not good art. Alas, yes. Oh, cut rabbit. Oh, I forget that these things that I that are normalized to me, having played this game for a million years, like. Yes, that's a good question. What what have they been told back home? God, I love this music. Okay, so do you remember in the first game I had a rune that I stuck on people? Or no, I don't think I put the rune. I think it was the save that we loaded had a rune on somebody and I was like, wow, this is a little good. Um, Greg is trying to get me to get those runes because they're really, really good. In fact, I think they're better in this game than they are. Yeah, no, I, I, I knew you were talking about the double beat rune. Oh man, the whopping 10 potch, amazing. Some trouble about on the border. Surprise attack on a mercenary army. Okay. Okay. I've got a bunch of medicine. Fortunately, they started me with that. I should probably have antitoxin. I f forgot <clears throat> that this song. But this is what the song is. I just know it because I've listened to the soundtrack so much. Like, you notice, like, the music gets quieter here. Oh, wow, Alex. Okay, well, do you, do you enjoy picking up on what's going on in a, in a game? Because I can tell you a little bit about what's happening on screen if that, if that'll help you. Right now... Our heroes, who are some young soldiers who fled their, um, their <laughs> child soldier brigade, got, as I mentioned earlier, got, uh, murdered by their own side for political reasons. Um, we wound up being taken in by some mercenaries who were characters in the first game. Now, our main character in this game doesn't know them because the main character in this game has no connection to the first game. But we, as, as the, uh, as the players, we know that these are friends that we recognize. Uh, but right now, we decided that we are breaking out of the nice mercenaries who took us in and held us prisoner, which I put in quotes. <clears throat> and uh, um, so we broke out of that, and um, we are now like trying to figure out how to get back to our home town in our home country so we've gone into this like small mountain village and so this music that we're hearing is because there is um 
That is the sound of a guy breathing fire. There's a there's a circus circus performers. There's a girl who's doing fortune telling with cards. There's a guy who's breathing fire, and uh, the uh, the person who is who's speaking to the crowd is looking for a volunteer <coughs> for the next part of the performance. And she is walking up to our character, who is confused. <laughs> the right height, and you've got a cute face. So she's hitting, hitting on you a little bit. You're sufficiently cute. She's going to drag you over to this tree. And tie you to the tree. Now the audience is very excited. Yeah, no, the sprite work. And again, these are not sprites that, um, like the animation of these sprites, like, it only shows up once. They did so much custom work. Like, if you look over at Rena in the corner who's doing her cards as she's reading tarot, like, I don't know that Rena doing cards ever shows up in the game again, but they wanted to make this scene be real and something that you can see. Um, that feels like, oh, I'm there, I'm present. Um, they're not just telling me that this is what's happening. Like, it's, it's, it's actually occurring around me in real time. It makes it have that extra bit of um, immersion, which I really, really like. Um, Final Fantasy VII Remake does a very good job, obviously. It's a world of difference between a contemporary 3D game and an old 2D sprite-based game. Um, but by making the world around you feel alive, um, it really ups the immersion, which is so effective. Um, in a game like Suikoden that hinges on feeling real. So I'm just gonna run my mouth about things. <laughs> so Ailey does not appreciate that Bulgan is not talking her up properly. The beautiful and famous knife thrower Ailey. <laughs> you can tell she wrote this. <laughs> her magnificent face and form. Amazing. So you can tell the two girls are sisters because their sprites look similar. <laughs> Rena is helping here. If we get, if if Eilie throws a knife into us, Rena will give us medicine to take care of us. <coughs> so there's a watermelon on his head. Well. Shall we hold still? Or shall we wiggle? <laughs> Alright, I love that Chrono's response to that is in all caps. Yay! She successfully threw a knife into the watermelon. Here's a squash. Okay, Commodore, shall we move to the right or to the left? <laughs> be a choose your own adventure for the players who haven't played the game before. All right, Commodore wants us to move to the left despite the sharp pointy things being thrown at us. <laughs> I don't I don't think I've ever done that before. <laughs> get something if you don't mess it up but we messed it up yes Commodore you are in fact an agent of chaos <clears throat> yeah okay so so I was talking about um, the girl who wrote her own bio she was a knife thrower and she was throwing knives at our main character like at things on his head <coughs> And we have the option to stand still or to wiggle around while she's throwing knives at the fruit on our head. And I remember, if I remember correctly, the last one, if you don't move earlier, is an apple and everyone in the crowd flips out and Joey just loses his mind. Um, <clears throat> but instead, we wiggled. So we got, we got a knife thrown into us instead of at fruit on our head. And Ailey is not happy with us. 
Thanks goodness you're okay. Proofreading is hard. Proofs reading. <laughs> okay, I think I'm funny. So everyone is glad we survived. We're all right despite having had a knife thrown at us. <clears throat> Helping you out, yeah. I mean, you did rope us into it. Traveling performers, yes. Bolgan is not the biggest brain in this game. So we're going to, we need to get from our current location in just the city state of Jouston to Highland, our home country. They are at war, so that might be difficult, but we are befriending these, uh, these circus performers, traveling performers, and they want to head out to Highland too. <laughs> oh yeah, so that's right, there's a mist monster on the way there, but it's fine. Circus performers will protect us. <clears throat> Joey has some concerns. He didn't hear about it because he wasn't here when we were running errands earlier. North Swallow Pass. We're going to go together to Highland. Joey is okay with this despite the fact that they threw a knife into me. Bye, Nosserok. Thank you so much for coming. And yeah, Greg, it makes me think of, uh, it makes me think of the, the village of mist and the mist dragon too, but it's not quite the same. Okay. So do we hit on her? Do we agree? Or do we decide to be contrary? Do we have strong opinions on the matter, friends? <sighs> I need to stretch. Ugh. Oof. Stretching is not something I've done enough of, so I'm going to try to do more of that. <clears throat> done way too much sitting. <laughs> that is a quote without any context at all. I like, I don't know if I said that. Right. Oh my gosh. Okay, if Uncle Stiltskin thinks we should flatter her. All right, let's flatter her then. <laughs> she's not impressed, but she's amused. Joey, on the other hand, is not thrilled that we're hitting on the pretty lady. Yeah, this is a very, very popular pairing. By the way, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> At the very least, I feel like Joey seems fairly clearly like he has... You could very easily read their friendship as him having a crush. So. Bolgan periodically uses full sentences and then he doesn't. No, so the mercenary guys... <coughs> the mer mercenary guys don't want us to go. The mercenary guys are staying put in one country. Um, and they are afraid that if we go back to our home country where they tried to kill us... Our home country is going to try to kill us again. <laughs> um, so they were trying to keep us as prisoners so that we didn't go rushing back home to get killed. Um, but we're stubborn and dumb, so we want to go back home even if it's dangerous. Yeah, no, it is a reasonable fear. And like, it doesn't come out at this point and say that that's why they do it. But Flick and Victor are smart um, and they, okay, okay. Rephrase. Flick and Victor understand things and they've seen things happen, so they kind of know what they're doing. Is that better? <laughs> <coughs> Look, okay. I love Flick and Victor very much. And they're not actually idiots, but they're also idiots, you know? All right. Hailey's weapon is called a slash knife. Rena fights with oh, oh oh oh! I didn't know this when I played this game. She fights with tarot cards. Uh, 
I'm sorting through my tarot decks. I'm going to get the one that I have that's majors only so that I'm more likely to be able to find what I'm looking for instead of having to go through all of them. So for those of you who don't know tarot cards, okay, this deck is adorable. This is my deck of um, <clears throat> my Japanese schoolgirl cat people deck. It's really cute. So here's the chariot. See, he's driving a chariot. <clears throat> Yeah, so presumably they will sharpen into different cards. Hello, pretentious Frostless. Well, we're fairly early on, so there won't be major spoilers, although we will be talking about things that happened in the first game. So if you haven't played the first game and want to, uh, here there will be spoilers. So be cautious of that. <laughs> well, welcome. This is, um, to give context, this is a game I've played before. This is a game I love very much, so this is not a first playthrough. I usually stream first playthroughs, but I've been having fun introducing people in my channel to some of my favorite games, and we just finished the first Suikoden, and now we are playing the uh, the sequel to it, which is the best of the series, in my opinion. Um, so, Dover, you'd be surprised. I have several decks that I love a lot. There are a lot of decks out there, and so if you go looking, you may very well find one that speaks to you. I have several that almost feel like they were made for me. I did actually start working on a Suikoden Tarot deck when I was younger. Um, I don't remember what I paired the characters with, like like which characters were which cards, but if I ever come across that in my old stuff, I will be sure to let you know. <clears throat> so yeah. Chariot is the, like, full speed ahead card. Uh, if it's reversed, it can be full speed ahead off the in the wrong direction. <laughs> um, but it's one of the more, more, more literal-ish, or at least more easily explained cards. Yeah, I'm trying to remember, because I don't remember if I came up with the deck when I actually knew anything about tarot, or if I was just going with what would look cool. Um, because <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know if I would have Victor be the chariot. I should have to think about that. God, yeah, don't, don't pull the swords. The swords are bad. <clears throat> but that's a fun detail because she was totally reading tarot cards. Okay, we're going to put the short range fighter in the front. Wow, Rio doesn't have much health right now. Uh, I guess I should probably heal him, shouldn't I? Wait, did he take... Did he take damage because of combat, or did he take damage because I threw a knife into him? <laughs> okay. Alright. What do the people around here say? Oh! Talking about how beautiful she is, and then seeing her and being like, oh shoot. Oh, look at all these little children! Oh, that's the kid who missed it. Alright, I suppose I should probably heal. <coughs> so notice, like, they've changed the way the inventory system works, so it's much less annoying. That's not to say it's not annoying. But it's less annoying. Alright. Let's go save. And then we're going to maybe gear up. I should probably put the boots on someone. <clears throat> oh, I didn't mean to save. Well, I, I saved. Oops. Or stay. I didn't mean to stay, but I did. Anyway, we're not going to get Clive's quest. Because that involves being fast. And I'm already, like, taking forever because I'm Lauren. And if there's one thing you can count on me doing, it's... Does anybody here need boots? <clears throat> if there's one thing you can count on me doing, it's talking a lot. Oh, man! Joey should probably wear the boots. Oh, is there blue glass? Oh, 
Because I thought you could recruit him regardless of time. I thought it was just that you didn't get his cutscene. Let's go ahead and sharpen. I don't have enough money. Oh, right, I don't have any money. Woof. So this is a dog noise? Cool. I don't know what that's supposed to sound like. This guy is so tired of si size male coming to him. Oh man, I love running with the birds. All right. <clears throat> All right. So that's going to be difficult. We have to get through the paths. What am I doing wrong? Because <clears throat> I thought this was where we wanted to go, but we can't go there. So, yeah, we will probably be editing the game time. Hmm. Oh, that's the forest. Oh, okay. All right, thank you, my sense of directions, apparently. I have not been paying as much attention as I should to where I'm supposed to be going. There we go. All right, auto fight, yes. We got a level. Not making lots of money here, but that's okay. Bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, bum. Here we go. Oh, is there another town? Oh. I don't generally go wandering around towns. Maybe I should. Should I go back and visit the other town? Should I load my save? So here we've got the circus performers applying pressure to the state soldiers, trying to convince them to please let us through to Highland. And Eile and Bolgan were not able to, uh, they were not able to uh, convince them. So Rena's gonna take matters into her own hands. Yeah. This is not something that I would give a content warning for though because this is a voluntary action. And the implication apparently is not actually what happens. Um, Joey's like, what just happened? And Ailey's like, what did you just do? And the kids are very confused. Okay, we're gonna go backtrack. Music that I like? I like this game's soundtrack. I like video game music. I like... Uh... Guitars. I like guitars a lot. But I play the flute. Oh, right! We can go to Toto! Let's go to Toto. <coughs> 
We even have an inn. Yeah, one thing that I really like about the Suikoden games is that like the small towns, the hamlets, the villages all feel like small towns and hamlets and villages instead of it being like big city after big city after big city, um, which is how a lot of games are. But this isn't how, that's not how this world is. Um, the, these, this world isn't set up that way. I know. Actually, pretentious frostless, like, I get, I get, I get people giving me a hard time because I don't always play flute on stream, and it is too late for me to be playing flute right now, but, oh, 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 so I've actually been picking up doing music covers again, like my Cowboy Bebop, Cowboy Bebop cover went up yesterday. I've only been working on it since 2015, but it's finally done, um, but I have a couple of Suigoden covers that I have in the works, um, in addition to the ones that I've already put up several years ago there's more I want to do so there will be more <sighs> there will be more Suikoden covers uh, I love Suikoden music so much rough rough like these are clearly dog noises oh man well I hope you enjoy it Chrono I haven't seen all of it but I do really like the music I, I've seen a couple of episodes, too. I've seen the Why You Don't Leave Things in the Refrigerator episode, <laughs> which is weird. Oh, I've already talked to these people. So here's the humble village of Toto. God, I love the music in this game. Oh, you know, actually, I've got a friend who would do this guitar work really well. Because I've got a couple, of, a couple of people that I collaborate with now. I have... A crisis core cover that a friend and I are going to do a whirlwind crazy thing to try to finish we've been we were talking about it today and I maybe he would maybe he would do this one this would go really well with a flute and guitar and whatever this is Peace is better than war, even though people aren't making money. <laughs> Taxes. Oh, Zamza. So. Staying for the night? No thanks. Thanks, though. Which band is that, Alex? Yeah, Cowboy Bebop is cool and stylish. Like, so cool and so stylish. Somebody was suggesting that I do the real folk blues, and I was like, I don't think I have it in me to do that. But then I was thinking about other songs that I should cover, so I've been working on that. <laughs> the Appraiser. Oh, that's right, Trading Posts. There's a, there's a trading side game in this. What does this boy say? Go to Muse. Muse is a big city. S sort of like the like Withered Earth, the song that plays in Tinto. I'm gonna take your son to the other village that we've been to. Look at this kid. This kid's so excited that dad is home. It's so exciting for everyone. The war is over. Everyone can go home and have their normal lives. They'll be fine. Everything's gonna be fine. I'm sure everything's gonna go well. Look at these cats. Hello, cat. See, this cat meows. This cat hisses. They sound like cats. Here is... <coughs> one of several warrior women in this game. I, I told you, Chrono, Murayama has has a type, and you also have that type. So you will be you will be able to appreciate. <laughs> this guy's trying to learn how to equip medicines. All right, you don't have any rare finds. Now we're fine. 
We're fine, thanks. Oh, these kids are playing like there's monsters. Oh no, look at all these kids fighting, play fighting. Knights and robbers. There are a lot of kids here. Ah. So if you'll recall, Joey said that a family in this village took him in. So there's all these people with little kids. There's a shrine. That certainly won't be important at any point in the future. Is there anything else we should go see or do over here? Puffballs! Yes! Okay. Let's see what happens when we do the circus attack. Fur furs. Okay, well, we won't get to see the circus attack. Because the buddy attack will take care of business. It's a little good. Like I said, the balance in this game is better than the balance in the first game, mostly, but not entirely. But it's okay. They find ways. Oh no. Oh no. Is there another town to the south? I don't know. I mean, probably. Oh, is, no is, is, is uh, one of the windows there? Yeah, let's go check that out. We might as well. There's no real reason not to. This is not a game that rewards grinding, but... Let's go south. Yeah, because we don't have our map yet. Fortunately, we can just unite. I swear this is a... I swear the no button is different than the no button was in the first game. And so I'm very confused trying to hit what I thought was the no button. Well, we couldn't really do anything in Toto either, but we went there. I kind of want to just move on, but can go. Nah, let's just move on. I don't think there's. I don't think there's anything to be gained. We'll we'll go to these towns later. So let's keep pushing forward because we've got half an hour or so before I shut down. So. As you might expect, if you've seen the first game, the the music does change some as as you get like more characters and more advanced and stuff in the game. All right, very effective. All right. Can I go into the- oh, I can't go into there a little. Okay. Well, that's alright. It's fine. It's all good. We're all good. Like, doesn't it look like some sort of like a- like an old ink painting? Doesn't it? You know? You know the kind that I'm talking about? And these, like, yes. I love the music in this game so much. I suppose somebody ought to have 
I mean, I guess she's got those. Yes, the Japanese ink wash paintings. Oh my god, these things are so annoying sounding. Now that's good for a group attack. Or that's good for, for a strong enemy. Yes, that's right. Killer bees. Killer bees. <clears throat> Notice when they die, they actually look like dead bees. It's pretty great. All right. Hmm. Here we go. Yes, my gut served me well. Escape talismans. Whole lot of cut rabbits. I think they've got helmets. I never thought too hard about it before, but I think they're helmets. No circus attack, just just the buddy attack. It's okay, eventually we'll come across things that the buddy attack can't handle. Uh, is this where I came from? Yes. Yes, those rabbits had lots of money. I... Honestly, I don't really do funny things, I don't think, in games. I'm not a very funny person. <laughs> Mostly I'm just painfully serious all the time. Man, all you folks trying to get me double beat runes. Six pack of rabbits equals a double beat rune. We'll see. Oh, can I? Thank you, Blue Glass. Flutie Bot is our bot, and we sometimes have her remember quotes. It is Cat Rabbits, okay. Alright. Let's squash the bees! No, oh, no. Nox. Yeah, there's a fair number of Nox quotes in. In Flutie Bot's compilation of quotes. For anyone who's joined my stream more recently than that, Nox was my old kitty. Alright, here's the circus attack. Oh, so one thing that's really fun about the Unite attacks in this game is that there's, with some of them, there's a random chance that they'll have a different animation. Um, which is very charming. Brass armor, like that you wear at the Brass Castle. Uh, oh, item. Yeah, so you can equip directly from, like, isn't this a, an improvement, a quality of life improvement? And it shows you how much it raises. Yes. Yes. So much better. I bet we're thinking of the same one, Possum. Oh, did I talk it up to you before, Spikey? Was that what it was? Was I like, Suikoden is amazing, you should play Suikoden, and then you played Suikoden and it was amazing? So I'm excited. <laughs> I do talk it up a lot. And now I'm streaming it so I can talk it up as I play it and you can all experience it. Even though I do appreciate a lot of you have played it now. Um, which just means that we get to say ominous things to uh, 
reference what's coming without spoiling it for the rest of you. <laughs> I try not to do that. But, uh, because I, I, I prefer not to have that kind of thing when I'm playing a game without knowing how it goes, but, um, <clears throat> apparently, when I'm streaming the game and I know it, I'm just insufferable instead. <coughs> well, I appreciate that, Chrono. It seems like, it seems like our other friends here who haven't seen this game before, um, have a, have an open mind about that, too, so... Oh my god, this game is so good. Like... You know, I'm not capable of being silent. Like, if I have laryngitis, and I can't speak and be heard, I will still try to talk. And if that doesn't work, I will get a notebook and I will carry around and write out what I'm trying to say. Like, it used to drive my parents crazy because they'd be like, you have to rest, Lauren. You're sick, you need to rest. Stop trying to talk, oh my god. <clears throat> yes, my band, our first album is called Immune to Silence. And, uh, I'm pretty... Immune to being silent. How am I doing for health? I don't know, Blue Glass. Let's check it out. <coughs> oh, maybe I should heal party members. Oh, I'm yawning, folks. But my roommate's dog has been waking me up in the mornings. Although I woke up this morning and Sophie, who's not usually a snuggler, was like right here. And I was like, this is the best thing. So yes, the fact that there was a save point there should have been an indication that there's something to have a bad feeling about. Boss music. See how this goes. We just saved. So even when the game was new, <clears throat> I felt that it's, um, I felt that it's special effects with magic and stuff were really silly looking. Yes, for anyone who's familiar with Final Fantasy IV, the idea of a mist monster will make you think of that. Oof. Oof. Okay. You're going to- oh, you don't have any items. Oh, okay. I forgot that I had a rune. <clears throat> Maybe I should make sure that everyone has healing items. <coughs> Maybe. Just one of the sounds. Oh no! Oh no! Okay. Yeah, we can take another hit. We're gonna do that. Okay. Wait, what's what's your rune? What is your rune? Oh. Rune's balanced now. We'll do that. You're gonna attack. You're gonna attack. See how this goes. This might be a bad idea. We'll find out. They push him so that he breathes fire more effectively. Don't kill him. Don't kill him. Don't kill him. 
Oh good, he's not dead. Somehow. Okay, you're gonna defend. You're going to attack. You're gonna attack. You're going to heal your brother. And you're going to heal the hero. It's mostly when they try to blend 2D and 3D. No, he died. No, he didn't die. I healed him in time. Okay. Why does he keep hitting the exact same two? Oh, okay. Does that mean that it's weak to magic? I don't remember how to fight this one, so I'm just going to cast fires on it. Set it on fire. Yeah! I don't remember Charon. Is that, um... In Final Fantasy VI, actually, is that one of, like, the paintings? The, the painting one? Yes, okay. Did I do it? I did it! Yes! No, it's specifically the way that they do their 2D, 3D stuff in this that I think looks really goofy. I'm winner, yes. Kindness drops, yes! <clears throat> Alright, this will be the version of the runes that I know better, I think. Yes. Everyone here is appreciative of everyone else's presence in helping fight the boss. <clears throat> Except Volgan, he wants food. Let's go save. Who need to heal? No, gosh. Oh, I'm sorry, I keep yawning. Yes. <clears throat> Let us save. I don't think I need a double beat rune. I'm really not a big fan of. I just, I really hate grinding for things. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Sorry. You get the sound effects. Just the sound effects. I wanted to draw more fan art. At some point I will. <clears throat> it was really interesting finding all of my old Suikoden fan art from way back in the day. Like I said, like I didn't realize that I'd drawn the Silverberg siblings, but I did. <clears throat> Bandits, huh? Nah. so good it's such good music and it's fun because you can hear um and not necessarily in this but in some of the songs like you can hear certain like you know classical pieces or composers that were inspiration i don't know oh you know what we're gonna <clears throat> we're gonna auto let's see what happens if we auto fight the cut rabbits bam 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 this might have been a mistake actually that's all right who's counting right Oh no! Yeah. Okay, that was not my best idea, but... Oh well. <clears throat> Uncharted Waters New Horizons. Is that a Super Nintendo game? Or is that... Feathered Hat. Oh, I like Feathered Hat. Equip. Oh, Joey doesn't have a hat. Joey now has a hat. A rather dashing hat. Sorry, I'm sorry. I can't not just make noise all the time. 
I'm just gonna make noise. I am the noisy Lauren. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, then yes, I am familiar with the game. <coughs> I'm not like super familiar, but I watched my ex-husband play it back in the day. All these cut rabbits. So many cut rabbits. Too many cut rabbits. Go away, cut rabbits. Well, we're gonna make short work of them. All right. We were talking like we were almost there. All right. So. in this game is so much. I'm going to turn it up a little bit in my ears. Yes. Just like look at look at the detail work on the trees. Like isn't it beautiful? Like compare this to the sprite work in the first game. And it is just, it is incredible. This would be another nice one to uh, make a cover of on flute. I could just like cover the entire speaker in the soundtrack, I swear. Our hometown is impressing them. Eileen is like, I don't want to say goodbye. So they're telling us, this is also telling us how to find their houses. <clears throat> we will endeavor to take care of ourselves, yeah. Leader of the mercenaries has got me worried, yeah. <clears throat> Victor made them think there's probably bad stuff going on. So they're like concerned, but not so concerned that they didn't come home. And to be fair, they haven't been home. I think that's how I go home. Oh god, just the, the graphics, the art, just I've forgotten how like relatively primitive the first game looks. Yeah, see, hurry up and run away. Yeah, that's that's why I started going the way to my house and then was like, never mind. <laughs> State is a bunch of creeps. Yeah, everyone recognizes you. And they're telling you to run away. Alright. Yeah, no, I'm... What about me playing games makes you think that I'm ever going to go directly the direction that I'm supposed to go? Yeah, like, I appreciate that so many people are like, oh my god. <laughs> Gosh. I'm sure that has no significance. Little, little throwaway bits like that. like my dad. Yeah, we don't get to go through those gates. 
they are not allowed for us. Dusty jar, ceramic bottle. <sighs> Slightly broken basket. Miscellaneous items. Like, there's just so much stuff. <clears throat> this is why I need to get the friendship rune. Genkaku's boy. Did you notice they've mentioned that somebody thinks that our dad was a traitor. Pickle jar. So yeah, cool, huh? Yeah, no, this game loves exclamation points a lot. So yeah, I mean, it's not that we didn't see this coming, but uh, <clears throat> It is definitely what's happening. Some people obviously don't believe the story, but they're the ones who are telling you to run. So, okay, first of all, the Tauran Republic is what was formerly known as the Scarlet Moon Empire. If you'll remember, that was Tauran Lake that our, um, our HQ was based out of. So it is now a republic. Um, but also, yes, Big Brother's not coming home, so Big Brother's not going to be able to take her to get her eyes fixed. Also, they really like oh boy as one word, and I don't know why they keep doing that, because that's not how that's written in English. Wait, what? Seriously? Her Big Brother is Roud? Huh. Stories from distant countries. That is at least more interesting than I thought he was. How do you know? I didn't realize that Raoul was from this village. <laughs> Commodore, I appreciate that. Like, how do you know that this is Raoul's place and that that's Raoul's sister? Because I thought he was assigned to. Hmm. The Unicorn Brigade instead of that the Unicorn Brigade came from the same town that he came from. That makes, in some ways that makes him a lot worse because it's one thing to do something to strangers, but to cause the death of children that you've grown up around is... Yeah. <sighs> Gossip. So, the Atreides boy is clearly well off. That's Joey, the boy from the dojo. Who could that be? Yes, he's a seducer. Oops. 
Oh, shoot. Oh, okay. Here we go. Oh, my God. And the animation of him trying to break free here. somebody because you're related and therefore you know that they're a trustworthy person like I don't think there's anything wrong with trusting people that you feel are trustworthy <laughs> it's like there's a lot of people in town who are like Again, here's a person who's choosing to believe that, like, like, you wouldn't do that. I know you. This seems like a breach of character. High quality side table. What are you, an appraiser, Rio? I mean, but also them betraying their country is a hard to swallow story. Yeah, so now we know what's going on. Right. See, there's a unicorn out front. So I guess that I guess that they must be the unicorn must be the symbol of this town. Huh. Interesting. I think we've seen everything there is to see that isn't our home. So let's let's go home. See how well this goes. Look at how pretty that is. Just like look at this. Unnecessarily beautiful. Like just look at how pretty that is. Uh, you know, Commodore, I think it's important to, uh, believe I'm not, I, I can't swallow any sort of plausible, um, 
defense of Mr. Atreides. Like... Is it this I thought I thought that I could go see the grave. I thought I could go see the grave first. But I guess I can't. I guess I do that later. Okay. The tr the, ha the tree. What tree? I do not remember a tree. What big tree? Oh, I did. I tried talking to it. Oh, I talked to the wrong part of it. Stupid squirrel. Hera was thinking there was something actually important. Sorry. I don't actually have any attachments to Muku Muku or the other squirrels. But you can you recruit him. Like that this is not where and when you recruit him. Like you Put inside his punishment. <laughs> Sake. Wire tree. I'm pretty sure that that's wrapped up logs, not a tree. Okay. Shall we do it? Does it ever say that that's his childhood pet or friend? Are we ready? Are the people who haven't seen the game before ready to go have a have a, a meeting with our sister? I want to make sure that I don't bump the story forward when there's people who need to see it. I hope Sophie hasn't meowed. I don't think I've heard her. All right, let's do it. I mean, I guess I have to look around first. Oh, right. Okay. Hold on. Yeah. Actually, I don't know that I ever explored the house. Grandpa's bed was not slept in recently. Tea ceremony, as a good grandpa should have. Ah, that sounds important. This was a dartboard, but it's actually food. Anami has made delicious food. I'm sure there's some significance to the to the flowers. <laughs> so we are the person from the dojo as you can see the dojos down there gosh and we're a pot steel pot <laughs> stash of snacks So, Nanami's favorite three vases, bag of potatoes, a bunch of weapons. No, uh, Joey's the Atreides. Um, we are not the Atreides, so there's not an Atreides sister. Okay. 
So you get a sense for home. Oh my god, she falls over when she sees you. I have been meaning to cover this song forever. Yes, no, a bazillion exclamation points work for her. Does any of the dialogue in this section change anything significant? I feel like it doesn't. But, okay. Like again, the custom animation in this scene of her running over and knocking him over. And his little eyes bulging out. So Nanami's theme is called Beautiful Morning. And like the way he's sitting and the way she's sitting and just like... And State Spy. So this is presumably you telling her the story. <laughs> yes, Nanami is the character in the game who deserves as many exclamation points as they want to throw after her, like after her dialogue. I mean, we're observing an exclamation point in action. That's Nanami. <laughs> Yes, if you come back here, that will be there for the rest of the game. It's amazing. So this game reuses themes across tracks and takes motifs from various various songs and pulls them together um, sometimes. Um, but yeah, this this melody is the melody in the song Reminiscence, which is the one with the, the singing earlier. Yeah, which which vase do we want? I don't remember. Oh 
<laughs> Running away money. <clears throat> Which one do we want? The medium one? I seem to recall it's not the big one. But I don't remember. Does anyone remember? <laughs> the small one is worth the most? Because it's either the small or the medium one. If it is the medium one, okay. <laughs> I thought it was the medium one, but... Okay. Is that the one we should take? Does anybody have any good reason why we shouldn't take the medium one? Because otherwise we're going to take the medium one. All three of these are her favorites. She's gathered her three favorites. Yeah, I should do a cover of Beautiful Morning. I should just cover the entire soundtrack. Smilardium, thanks, Chrono. Oh, I didn't realize the small one was in Nanami's handmade vase. Oh, that's that makes me sad to not take it then. Yeah. I'm just gonna get Muka Muka. Okay. Ah. Uh, I don't think I want it. That thing. That's a boss attack. Hi, cistern. I mean, honestly, I would not be surprised if my whole party died here. the first game don't get me wrong but this is the game that like I'm gonna show everybody I mean not that we aren't gonna see more of this but I want you guys to see the family attack so there's an alternate version of that um, where Nanami just has snacks and reads books and stuff instead, and it does less damage, but she gets re she gets healed. It's really great. It's so great. I love it so much. We'll see it, and I'll squawk about it when it happens. Don't worry. It'll happen eventually. <laughs> so she's got to give him, got to tease him. But I mean, if you look at her, she's also breathing fast too. But. Well, what do we choose? Okay. All right. Slacking, amazing, yeah. Probably a bad idea, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh. Okay. 
Them beating Route up like this is very satisfying, but unfortunately, it did not really do any. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, this is a scripted loss, right? That's not a survive numbers of rounds. It's an actual scripted loss, right? Yeah. Then I will save my medicine. beat this guy up. We beat one guy up. to beat these guys up. Oh, wow. Yeah. I guess we're lucky that they capture us instead of outright murdering us. <clears throat> but they could use the effect of trying or executing their spies. Why even call him Captain at this point? He hasn't shown any worth of your... He, he does not deserve respect or titles. <laughs> he apologizes. Good night, Dover. We'll see you next week. Like, he, like, apologizes and then clearly doesn't have any actual remorse. So this is good. It's good leadership. Yeah, understanding that he has an actual, like, human compassionate reason to want the money shifts this a little bit because I always thought he just wanted money. It is time to shut down soon, Commodore. Sorry. We just, we got into, um, plot stuff and it's not really easy to break. So...
Yeah. Yeah. General Raud has killed people for his ambitions and will continue to do so. Yeah. Like none of these sprites or anything get redone or reused. It's well, shall we? Shall we? Shall we plead to this important-looking person? Oh, that's true. Horses, as opposed to dragon horses. So it's the princess. He hasn't long to live, let him speak. Is it, Chrono? So yeah, they're going to uh, beat these two characters to death. By the way. <laughs> like, they're not being, like, hanged. <laughs> or something quick and merciful. They're being brutally beaten to death. Any last words? Yeah, I figured you'd want to go with that. See, like, this is why, like, even if he has a reason for wanting the money, Suspense. All right. It's satisfying, isn't it? I admit I was drawing that out a little bit because I knew it was coming. 
<laughs> yes. Raud was monologuing at the sunset while Flick took out every single one of his soldiers. <laughs> Thank you, Flick. Victor. <laughs> uh, I was so upset as a kid, as you can probably imagine. Everything about this scene was deeply upsetting. And you feel so powerless and it's brutal and you kind of feel the brutality of it. And then... <sighs> in comes looking Victor. To save the day. Victor underestimated us. <laughs> Victor. Isn't he great? <laughs> I'm sure it's not that it's not that Victor was worried about these kids. Not at all. No, no, Flick and Victor will all be here no matter what. Um, it's just like if you've played the first game, then you know, <laughs> then you know them. But otherwise, they'll be here regardless. Um, yeah. No, this is this is the way the scene goes, fortunately. Let's go save Nanami. There's not even a question here, obviously. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever flick. You can't pretend you're not every bit as invested in this as he is. You mean you can pretend, but I'm not fooled. There we go, that's better. Yeah, sorry. We will get to the next save point eventually, and then we will shut down for the night, but we were either going to do the village, like do this town next week, or we were going to do it all tonight, and we're doing it all tonight. <laughs> See, Flick has calmed down. He's the level head of the two now. I love Nanami so much. She's gonna come save us. Golden Bird Holy Flower Dragon Tooth Glory Punch. Isn't she great? <laughs> we were coming to rescue you. It's very nice for them to give you the change formation <laughs> because they didn't do that in the first game and they've since learned okay let's go talk to those dudes is there anything else here besides talking to the dudes
All right. I thought maybe there'd be like a thing in the jail, but there does not appear to be a thing of any sort. Oh, wait, she punched the door in? What? I mean, she knocked over the table and chairs over here. I don't know if I can see the punching. Oh, the one to the steps. Okay. Oh, she, she sure, she sure did, didn't she? Oh my god, Nanami. She's amazing. Those guys have evaporated. It's okay. They went home. <laughs> She's fantastic. And there are people in the world who don't like her and they're wrong. Like how like she was like running after those guys over here. There's not even anything over here, Nanami. What were you doing punching dudes? Nanami is amazing. She's just... Like, if they decided to go the, like, Tsundere, like, type of, like, hyper girl that way, like... But, uh... They didn't. They made her your super enthusiastic, loving sister. Okay. We're gonna save. And we'll pick up with the rest of our escape sequence next week because we are 40 minutes over schedule, which has been happening with Final, oh, Final Fantasy VII Remake, I'm not, stay tuned for the schedule because I have to take Sophie to the vet that night. So we will either be streaming early and ending or very early, or we will start streaming late and end very late, or we will just cancel for the week. So, um, but we will be streaming Suikoden 2 next Tuesday, Tuesday for two, because three, two, two, two. I'm going to save again. You know, no, no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a uh, save state. Okay. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. It was awesome to have you. I appreciate your patience despite our technical difficulties and going 40 minutes over. Um, but I hope you have enjoyed the game. Um, if you haven't seen it before, I hope that you'll continue to tune in and enjoy it. It's pretty great. We'll talk more about it and feelings and things. Um, as we keep going. Thank you, Jobber. Wow, 37 months. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and good night, folks. And I will see you all possibly Thursday. If not, I might try to do a stream on the weekend and then we will definitely be picking up at Sweet Good Into again on Tuesday. Good night.